G'day everyone, welcome to Aussie Tech Heads episode 648 on the 5th of September. September. I've nearly got the date wrong, 2019. Uh, thanks to Will and Jace for stepping in last week, had another great show, so thanks for those. The Dynamic Podcast Duo. Uh, we are brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. Register, register your company fast, easy and direct with ASIC. So there we go, a little graphic for the YouTubers. Uh, all docs provided, your constitution, your minutes and all that, etc., etc. Uh, for your download at, at any time, whether it be straight away or later on, it, costs, it takes about 10 minutes to register your company with ASIC. So uh, why not jump in and uh, get started? If you're an accountant or other professional, you can also brand your documents uh, with your company name. So coming soon, AB, oh, ABNs, you can always, always, already do ABNs, but coming soon is TFN and Trust. Good stuff. And also brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au. So fast SSD server, oh, drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates, domain registration and more. And clock faces by Aussie Byte. If you've got a Fitbit, you might want to go along to the Fitbit app gallery. And uh, have a look in there. Use the purchase code ATH19 and you'll get a 33% off. Thanks to Jace. It's the biggest seller. It's the biggest selling big weather app on the Fitbit app gallery. So there you go. Good stuff. Good on you, Jace. Now, um, what else is going on? Uh, We've got a special guest. It's Paul. How you going, Paul? How are you, Lynn? How you going? Yeah, good, thanks. Thanks for stepping in. Jordan a bit uh, croaky this week. So uh, it's good to... Good that you were available and uh, yeah, want to have a chat. Yeah, well, I'm not. I'm not cracky. You think I might have been after being in the snow uh, a week ago? A week ago was it? Yeah, uh, last, yes. Last Monday we came back. Yeah, yeah. And, and what have you been up to since then? Just busy. Oh, just trying to play catch up. I'm trying to get back into work mode first, and then just trying to play catch up on on the stuff that I didn't uh, get done while I was gone. Right. Fair enough. Good stuff. Um, all right. So let's. Let's go with. Um, oh, okay. What I'll do. What I wanted to ask everyone. I've got my little notes here. They're just coming up. Look, we might have a bit of a echo in the Facebook, so I don't know what we're going to do there. Yeah, you know, if you can't put up with it, I'm not going to muck around with it this week. <laughs> so we've got to move. We've got to keep moving. If it's too much, I'll just tell me if it's too much. If it's unlistenable, I'll just switch Facebook off. Uh, Did someone comment? Someone comment on Facebook? Do they? Yep. Yeah. Right. Uh, Justin, so thanks, Justin, but um, I don't know why we have these issues. <laughs> I've just got no idea. I thought I'd sorted them, but obviously not. Uh, anyone watching the video on iTunes download? I put a video up on iTunes as well as YouTube. Uh, if you're watching it, or, or if you're not, if you're watching the video anywhere but uh, YouTube, can you let us know? Because I'm thinking about discontinuing it, because uh, it just takes a bit of time to do two lots of videos, a high res and a low res. So if, if you're watching it on uh, anything else but YouTube, let me know, and I'll keep doing it. And uh, also, I want to congratulate Michael and the boys down at the Aussie Max Zone for reaching 300 episodes. So I went, I went oh. and uh, had a little chat to them last Monday on their episode 300. It was great. Good to good to have a chat with Michael, Zahn, and Garth. Yeah, it was good stuff. Good so stuff. Get, check that one out. That'll be on the radio this week, Paul, for you to listen to. Max Zone? Yeah, on the uh, Aussie Tech Radio. Yeah, I don't think I'll be uh, listening to Max Zone too much. No, oh, that's right. You're not really into that, are you? Do you turn the no, radio no, off no. when? That, do you turn the radio off when that comes on? Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a heavy, I'm a heavy Windows uh, fanatic. Right. Right. So, like, I don't even use uh, Linux or Unix all that much. I have used it, but Windows is uh, more my scene. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, well, Windows is my scene as well. But look, I do have Max. Yeah, as you all know, I've got the iPhone. I'm back on the iPhone. Did, were you here last week or when I said yeah, I was? No, I, I did. I was a year before you. Uh, the, sorry. Week the before. week before you mentioned that you uh, have retired your uh, Xiaomi to uh, the cupboard and you've gone to uh, back to iPhone. That's right. Well, I have. But look, speaking of iPhone, there's a couple of mobile stories and um, probably Apple stories this week. Um, there's nothing else really going on at the moment. I think everyone's just gone quiet for the Apple event that's coming up next week. But Apple is uh, What's going. The Apple event is that the uh, W, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever they do. Oh, in... no, the release of the new phone. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So that's what I'm waiting for to see what comes out. You know, because no point in buying a new one now. Might be able to get the ten cheaper, or the you know get the eleven for the same price as the ten it is now. Yeah, or, so, or the XR. Yeah, yeah, probably looking at the XR, but we'll see what happens. See what happens next week. But yeah, look, 
that uh, the Apple is to supply iPhone parts to independent repair businesses. Now, this is something a bit new. Uh, Apple said on last week that qualified independent repair businesses will now be able to get access to out-of-warranty iPhone parts. So the authorised service providers uh, receive access to both in-warranty parts and out-of-warranty parts for all Apple products. The Apple announcement only mentions making out-of-warranty parts available to non-authorised service providers and only mentions providing parts to the iPhone. So that's interesting. Uh, because, like, you know, there's been a bit of a mucking around with um, iPhones and the ACCC and, you know, and people, the Apple bricking the phones because the fingerprint sensor's been removed or replaced or something else, the screen's been removed or replaced, but the original sensor's been put back and then the phone's just bricked anyway. So I wonder if this is something to um, try and counteract that. Uh, That's been an ongoing uh, discussion for quite some time, the um, third-party repairer um, uh game isn't it is that it's mm. associated with uh allow, allowing people other than apple to do repairs qualified apple people yeah well it looks at from what it says here it's a, yeah that's the more of the unauthorized repairers access to uh unique or original parts but it looks like only from outside uh, oh, okay from, so it is a little different because that's not repairing that's more to do with the parts mm. yeah so look i've got a if i can get these get this screen up we can have a look at a bit of a story oh look it's too big Squeeze that in there <laughs> like that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So um, yeah. So it just goes on to say, yeah, they, uh, uh, yeah, the independent re- repair provider program. It's free to join, but repair shops will be required to have an Apple certified technician on staff. So qualifying repair businesses will receive Apple genuine parts, tools, training, repair manuals, and diagnostics at the same time. Uh, as the authorised Apple repairers, Apple said in the news release. So that's a big change because they like to keep all this sort of stuff in-house, don't they? Yeah, so. yeah, and that's a bit of a surprise actually because uh, they're, gonna, they're actually going to supply supply um, supply the, the notes for repair too. Yeah, that's a little surprising. Mm. Well, I guess they've you know they've does it cause too much trouble if you're not going to you know use the parts or supply the parts there's a lot of upset people you know if your iPhone 5 had a cracked screen or needed a battery replacement and you took it in to get repaired and all of a sudden it's bricked you're not going to be very happy and it's no fault of the repairer but like why wouldn't they you know like oh what was it today like i had a mate ring me up and say oh he bought the bought this apple mac on ebay 2015 model and so when he got yeah. it home he went in to replace the hard drive with an ssd you know like just you know yep uh, speed it up and uh it wouldn't work it had come up with a big lock symbol on it you know because Gee. because uh the person who owned it had, had like you know probably similar something to bitlocker on the pc yeah Where, yeah i think max was it so sorry this was a mac, mac computer laptop yeah a, a mac yeah imac that's right I'm actually okay. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't know that you could lock them down like that, but that was just replaced parts, and you know, get that come up. Yeah, we tried to well, he tried to put the the SSD, and it wouldn't boot from the SSD. So he got that lock, and he couldn't go into the disk utility or anything like that. Uh, but when he put the original drive back in, it all worked. So somehow <laughs> there was a code that married the, you know, like, like the BitLocker thing or the CMOS password or something like that on a PC. Um, yeah, it's a similar technology to one of those. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, probably more CMOS because the hard drives are pretty low level. Mm. So anyway, um, luckily enough for him, the where he got it off eBay, uh, they had a thirty day money back guarantee. So he said, "Well, I can't get into it." He took it over to the Apple shop, and they said, uh-uh, "We need the original purchase receipt." And uh, of, of what the of I'm, the computer? Yeah, of the iMac. Yeah, the eBay <laughs> receipt wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I guess which is fair enough because it's uh, it's for security, isn't it? Like it's the same with iPhones. If someone steals your iPhone these days, they can't use it. Like, yeah, it's it, most a lot of phones. It, the Google's got their own equivalent, and got their own equivalent in the um, the lockdown uh, side of. I forget what it's called. Uh, it's yeah, the they, same. They, 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 a lot of computers and phones have something similar to uh, stop if it's stolen, you can lock it down. Mm. Yeah, and I think uh, I think look, Apple's probably got the the most secure part of it because, yeah, look, look, it's probably fair enough. And you know, the guy who the guy who he bought it off apparently bought it at an auction, 
So you know, this guy's just buying stuff cheap, reselling on eBay. But um, in mm. th- this particular instance, he got he sold this iMac to me mate who was probably smart enough to want to even try and replace the drive uh, because he knew, you know, being four or five or six years old at the Mac, they knew that the drive was going to fail one day. So he goes, well, let's just start off and make it faster, put an SSD in it, but didn't like it. Uh, so he's going to send it back. Yeah. Because, so, okay. um, you know, I've sold an iPhone on Gumtree. You know, you, you, the bloke or chick comes around and they just say, oh, you know, they look at, find my phone, make sure it's all off and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. Because you've got to, I guess, these days. Yep. But, yeah, you, you don't see too many CMOS locks, do you, Paul? No, a lot of people, because by default, CMOSs aren't locked. Um, and if – I don't think I've come across any, really. Um, that's a pretty low-level lock. Uh, yeah, it's easily easily removed. You can – yeah, you just you can just do a uh, jump yeah. uh, jump on a motherboard if it's a desktop or a laptop, probably a little more difficult. But there'll be a – There'd be a workaround, I reckon. I think the BitLocker. Uh, I'm not sure if the BitLocker actually renders the computer useless. It might just be no, that drive. No, it renders the data, the data inaccessible. Yes, yeah it's, just, yeah, it's just the drive. So if the computer, you could put another drive in and still use the computer, but Max have gone the extra step and um, yeah, tied it all together and said, uh-uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, interesting. That was an interesting story from... Yeah, but uh, look, I did a found a survey this week of fifty of the best places to work, uh, as ranked by Great Place. Now I'll we'll get this up on the screen so we can have a look. As, at as in cities or actual businesses to work? Uh, businesses, because it went through different categories of uh, depending on how many employees that you had. And let's, oh yeah. So let's have a look. So, so the fifty best places to work. So if we go from let's go to start with under a hundred employees. No, and with there's no employees. What's what do we get there? Oh, oh, it's uh, Aussie tickets. Just me. <laughs> oh, me entire computer <laughs> yeah, service. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I reckon my place is pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you get a lot of fresh air on that little electric bike of yours, don't you? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. How's that thing going? Still pumping along? It is. Yeah, I'm. I'm loving it. Um, uh, probably put a bit of a plug in for Dillinger electric bikes on the Gold Coast near you. Oh yeah, they're up in Surface uh, or somewhere. Is that where they're, they're in? No, uh, Southport actually. Oh, that's right. That's, that, that's where that's where the uh, but the mind you, they'll deliver to anywhere in Australia, the world, I think, actually. Right. But uh, they're a bit of a leader in the uh, in the uh, the electric bike field, or with retrofitting, anyway. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because you had, you had a couple of issues, didn't you? Like about a year ago. Oh yeah, yeah. When you when you when you're retrofitting anything, you can retro retro retrofit a car. You put a, 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 a Corolla. You stick a turbo a twin turbo a supercharger in a Corolla, like retrofit that. And you're going to have issues because they were never designed to do it. And mm. the same with a bike. If you, my, my bike was actually, would you believe my bike is nearly? In fact, I think it's 20 years old. Yeah, the actual right. frame, the base of it, and I retrofitted the uh, electric motor to it. And it was never designed for. There's no such thing as electric motors on bikes back in those days. No, it was and, all uh, all leg power, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and leg power cannot get the torque that a. Uh, We'll not get the torque that a, a motor could potentially get. Right. And what happened to yours? That the motor burnt out or something? Is that what oh, happened? well, I've had, I've, had a, I've had a few. I've been using electric motor, electric uh, retrofits on bikes for about uh, eight years now, for quite a while. Mm. And, um, yeah, basically, I, I must have done 20, 30, 40,000 kilometres on this, this one, and the cogs just decided to wear out and... Instead of just quietly wearing out and just uh, sitting over there, there was a big crunch, bang, bang, crunch, crunch, crunch. And the next thing, uh, I got a feeling all of my cogs were shot to pieces. Yeah, right. But it was just, it was, it was time for me to upgrade to a, a more efficient, better, bigger system. Mm. And uh, what I've got now suits me down to the ground. Yeah, it's also like, uh, like Toowoomba wouldn't be too uh, congested traffic wise, would it? But you can No, still- well, it is. Well, we had this thing called uh, the highway that goes through the middle. But as of this weekend, they're going to be opening up our uh, – uh, it's quite a benchmark for Toowoomba, the Toowoomba Second Range Crossing. Right, okay. There's been millions of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions, possibly billions, I don't know, but it's a lot of money has been spent on it. Mm. And, uh, it's a big thing for Toowoomba. It's actually going to get a lot of the traffic out of the city because uh, it really doesn't do anything for, the, for those that live here uh, having trucks going through. They generally don't stop, so they're not really bringing income into the city. They're just uh, – Running through. 
put everything in congestion in our city. So, um, so I was actually going to ride. I was going to uh, do the second range crossing ride. It was like a an opening day thing, but. It's a bit too expensive for my liking. I'm a bit of a skin flint here, so hmm. I'll wait till it's open and then I'll go for a wander on a day. Yeah. And and so the crossing is over or under or a bit of both? Or it's just... a viaduct. It's actually uh, – it goes to, um, you know, where Grantham is. Grant, uh, you know, Helen and Grantham, that's where, the, where there, there was a lot of the flooding. and Water died. problems, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's actually um, – from there, it actually goes onto a raised road, which actually becomes a viaduct, which is – Oh, I don't know, it could be 50, 50 metres high, some of the viaduct, which mm. actually slowly slopes up to the uh, up, up the range, to, off to one side of the city and goes around the city. Right. And did you say it was a toll road? Well, it is. A, I didn't say it's a toll road, but, yeah, it will be when it's finished, when it's uh, all up and running. Yeah, right. And it's, it's not going to be cheap, I think, for people. People who live in Toowoomba have no reason to use it, so therefore they're not going to care whether there's a toll on it. Yeah. But I think it's going to be about 3 or 4 or $5 for um, a car to do the full length of it, or for trucks, we're looking at, uh, I think it's $25 for a truck to drive on it. So it's Holy jeez. That's crazy, isn't it? Like, but the, the, the range, the Swimber range is pretty tough on trucks. Mm, yeah, well, I, well, I guess it would be. It's a, it's a long way up, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a steep, it's, the problem is not the height. The, the problem is the steepness of the range. Mm. Yeah, I haven't been to, I haven't been to Toowoomba for years, probably... I don't know, thirty or forty years. <laughs> well, we got we got a carnival flowers coming up, mate. Carnival of flowers. Yeah. Oh, great! Oh, bloody uh, break out. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. okay. well, don't come here then. <laughs> no. Um, but anyway, getting back to the best uh, places to work. Yeah. And uh, Toowoomba should yeah. be at the top of everyone's list. And uh, absolutely. Or maybe maybe Rabina should be at the top. Toowoomba a close second. Yes, yeah, there's a good guy in Rabina. Yeah, <laughs> so are you. <laughs> but there's a um, the number one for under employees is Avenue Dental. Like, like what? what? Kind of- <laughs> <laughs> so I've never heard of them. Okay, well, let's have a look at their little uh, web page then. See what they're all about. Avenue Dental is a group of dentists. Uh, with practices covering the Sunshine Coast, they've developed a strong reputation for great quality dentistry in a friendly, comfortable, caring environment. There we go. There. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Avenue Dental. Oh, geez. Then the uh, <laughs> the next one. It's going to be something like Google or Microsoft. Oh, no, they don't have under, under 50, do they? Yeah. Well, the next one is Log Me In Australia. Really? Um, yeah. A couple log, of. Log Me In, I reckon. Log Me In, I reckon, must be doing it a bit tough because. Um, they're no cheaper. Or they're not a. Uh, I, I used to use Logmein, and I moved across to TeamViewer, as you know, mm. and because um, they were roughly about the same price. TeamViewer was a bit cheaper than them, and uh, I reckon they would have lost a bit of business because they used to be really good value for money. Yeah, and then, yeah, now, now yeah. they're they're not as competitive. Yeah, I had the same experience. Yeah, but I should point something out. Have you? You ever got uh, tech support from, like, remote support from Telstra or uh, Microsoft? From Microsoft, yeah. Two massive companies. They actually use LogMeIn Rescue, which is a is one of LogMeIn's products, um, for their remote support. They don't they don't use their own. They don't their have own. their own. Probably, probably, <laughs> probably fails too much. <laughs> yeah, so that's something they uh, use third party. Yeah, because I remember oh, oh, a year ago or whatever it was, yeah, yeah, I got some support from Microsoft. The log me in window uh, popped up, but it looks yeah. like they might have yeah flicked them a few extra dollars, and now it's it's white labelled. It's all Microsoft. No, uh, I think you'll find. Um, I was talking to them recently, and they they um, do have log me in rescue still uh, up there. Oh, right, because all all I did last time was you just uh, hit the start button on your keyboard and type join me or something or join in or something, and that kicks off the Microsoft program. When was the last time you did that? A uh, month ago. Not long oh, okay. ago. Well, yeah. I'm not using a join me. Maybe I don't have that on my computer. They just tell me to go download an applet, uh, a, a, an ex- a single executable file called Log Me and Rescue from the internet, and uh, I'll be go from there. Now, I'm just typing in join. Now, that didn't – no, it mustn't be join. It's, it's something like that, though, uh, because – let me try remote – Join no. me sounds right. That's join me is also a product. I yeah, think, which yes. is a uh, uh, log me in product as well. Right, but but I when I typed it into the search bar in the Windows, it came up straight away. But it's not today, so I must have it wrong. But it's uh, it's something like that. But anyway, uh, look other other companies. Let's get let's buzz through these. Yeah, things. yeah, we we're making slow progress. Yeah, so log me in and look half of these companies I've never heard of are Incentra, 
uh, Amicus, uh, Cobill, Cobild, SC Johnson and Son, Versa. How far I've down? I've heard, do heard we... of SC Johnson. That's the uh, Bando people, isn't it? Well, is that? I thought that was Johnson and Johnson. Oh, oh true. Must I think be the I've same. Heard of SC Johnson. Yeah, that... for a bit of a... oh no, that doesn't sound right. I don't know. Yeah, blah, that blah, logo blah. looks a bit like the Johnson and Johnson logo. Yeah, a little bit. But um, yeah, but that's that's them anyway. But like, yeah, so that's the top, pretty much the top ten. Uh, yeah. Mars. So not many tech companies there. Okay, let's go to yeah, te- tech's a bit of rubbish. Oh, that's under tech's a pretty there. rubbish industry to work in, I think. Yeah, let's go a hundred to a thousand employees. You've got Striker, number one. What's Striker? Striker is a medical technology industry leader with offices in five Australian states and New Zealand. Well, there you go. That's Striker. There you uh, go. Then we've got uh, Canva. We've heard of Canva. Everyone well, do you know, you Canva. Don't you know Canva's Australian? Yeah, I know. I only found that out That's great. the other week. You might have said it. No, um, I don't think so. Um, yeah, Intuit? Yeah, in, Intuit, as in the Reckon, or they used to be associated with Reckon, didn't they? Mm. And I think also that, uh, you know, when you go to look for themes and stuff, uh, Theme Forest or Invato, I, I think I even think, yeah, there, there's Invato. They come at number seven. They're, they're Australian too. I think they're based in, out of Melbourne, yeah, somewhere down there. I think Australia's not a bad place to work. What do you reckon? Yeah, well, I, what was it? A couple of months ago, we had that story that Zoho was uh, moving out of Sydney into Byron Bay. Yeah, so. yeah, and we've actually got—I don't know—we've uh, got a tech company has um, come to Toowoomba Tour of all places too, uh, partially because we've got a new data centre here. Right. Um, but they're an actual uh, a fairly big Australian software uh, developing company. I haven't heard of them before, but it doesn't make them small. Small. Mm. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, so taking out the big boys, over a thousand employees. You have got Salesforce, Must of course. Sounds like a big, pl- nice place to work. Then uh, number two, Cisco, uh, Hilton, Mecca Brands. Cisco. I've got a nephew. I've got a uh, my niece's uh, uh, husband. Which mate is that? My nephew? No, my niece's husband uh, has been working for Cisco, and for about six months, he, a, he uh, got out of Australia Uni and uh, into Cisco, and he's over in Los Angeles at the moment, nice. partying. I mean, um, doing training. Yeah, right. Oh, cool. Yeah, so look, there must be some uh, some nice places to work. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. All right. Now, uh, look, getting back to these Macs for a minute, uh, this is something that just came up on the Mac Zone that I did on Monday, uh, but I thought it was worth to bring it up here just in case. A bit of a bit of a heads up, I guess. But uh, Virgin Australia has banned all MacBooks uh, from the checked-in luggage. Yeah, I heard that. Mm-hmm. Because they're afraid they're going to blow up, I suppose. And even yeah. if you take them on the plane with you, you're not allowed to turn them on. Really? Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. That's what I heard. Yeah, right. Because Michael was saying that uh, you're allowed – if you – if you get a, you can get a certificate or something from Apple to say that the battery's been replaced uh, and it's not a danger and blah blah. I think they might let you, you get, get on you there. Probably also get a certificate to say the battery's been removed. Right. Yes. That wouldn't be very useful though without a battery. No, and they're pretty much sealed units, so that'd be really um, inconvenient. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> I'm, being facet- I'm being facetious here. Yeah, so uh, but apparently the reason why they banned them all was because you know that the the hostesses or the check in or the whoever the the staff, well or even me or you probably just can't look at it one can't go that's the model that had the bad battery, you know no. you can't tell. So they just all blanket coverage. Yeah, so they've banned passengers from bringing all Apple MacBook models into their checked in baggage. Uh, the the Virgin cited Apple's wor- worldwide recall of older generation 15-inch MacBooks in June after discovering that the lithium-ion batteries could overheat, causing a fire. Yeah. Customers can check their device's serial number on the Apple's website, and there's a link in the show notes, to see if it's eligible for a free battery replacement. Uh, Virgin Australia warned customers that all MacBook models will be restricted to carry-on luggage until further notice. You know, you know they're picking on an apple. They're picking on an apple here, but surely Apple's not the only one that's had this trouble with their laptops. So how come they're not picking on anyone else? Yeah, don't know, don't know. Because I think there are others like HP. They had some issues, and yeah, I remember Sony. I remember early stages. Sony had issues, and I didn't. There wasn't a blanket ban on all Sony laptops, was there? No, no, not at that time. No. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. So it must be because if you chuck them in under the in the you know, under the plane, what is the 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 pressure must must be no, worse I think for the them problem, or something. I'm assuming 
uh, here's my, my uh, theory. I think under the plane, it can't be monitored. You can't see if it catches on fire, whereas at least if it's in the cabin with you, right. you can see and do something about it. Yeah, okay, right. You yeah. can have a raging fire in a uh, uh, underneath and they can do nothing about it because you can't get in there because it's pressurised and mm. separated. That's not pressurised, I mean. Yeah, yeah. So there's not much oxygen up there, though, is there, up in that eye? But, um, yeah, yeah, there's well, there, there's temperature, there's three problems. Oxygen is very uh, limited at whatever height it is. Um, temperature, it can be well below, so it's like sub zero, and uh, the pressure is will uh, take its toll too. It's amazing. I don't know if you ever noticed it when you've been flying, but the last time I went to America and we were coming into uh, Florida, that I was looking at the, the screen, you know, on the back of the seat, I was looking at the temperature, outside temperature, and you know, it's pretty cold. Up high, but is it? Oh yeah, minus thirty or something like that. It's pretty cold. It, it can it can be like up there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was watching it, and even as we got down, they were getting lower, 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 and it's still like you know, like minus ten or whatever, like this. And it wasn't until like I don't know, like it just seemed like only a couple of hundred meters that it just go from cold to about twenty five. <laughs> you know, so yeah, the heat you- of the Earth is not a wide blanket. Yeah, and there's some. Um- I don't know if you've ever looked closely at your window. Sometimes you'll see um, little frost frost building up on the outside of your window. Yes, yeah. Or inside, I don't know what it is. I think it's two levels, two, two parts of your window. And, yeah, look, you can actually see the frost building up. So it's obviously quite cold out there. Well, talking about uh, being up high, how's this thing? The world's first space hotel. Wow, yeah? Yeah, so this is going to be hopefully – ready to have a bit of a stay in in 2025 now i've got a um hang on i've got a video here if i can keep this link get this link working just so we can have a bit of a look at it nevada Uh, desert or something is it no it's up in space (laughs) hang on let's go mute that so we let's go back over here now can we see that there we go yeah okay let's see this now i'll read you the story after I skip that ad. Is that an ad? Okay. Um, yeah, so the orbiting space station is designed to accommodate 400 guests and has facilities that you find in top hotels such as restaurant, bars and a cinema. Uh, this, is a, this is the International Space Station? No, it's similar to it. it it's, oh, it's, oh. Yeah, it's okay. not the International Space Station, but it's going to be uh, same sort of technology, they reckon, that, that made the uh, the ISS. It is called the creation is... Uh, it has it has called the creation the Von Braun Space Station and has plans for it to build upon technology that is already used in the International Space Station. It's going to be a big wheel. It's like a, you know, like the Brisbane wheel or the London wheel. It looks like that, but just out there in space. Well, it doesn't have to have an axis, does it? Oh. An axis, it doesn't. It doesn't, uh, like a, a Ferris wheel has an axis to uh, keep it above the ground. It yeah, just spins in space, but yeah, yeah, it's a... Same thing, yeah. Yeah, so this thing just is just up there, and but it's going to like slowly spin uh, to give a, I think, as much gravity as about the moon or something like that. I said it will be lower. Yeah, I know. That, you think people will just oh. be still flipping around all over the place, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it's it's um, it, it'll be more like a orbiting cruise ship with luxury accommodation and cocktail bars. The designers also think there will be space for educational seminars in the hotel. So unlike the space station, the aim is for the space hotel to ha- yeah to have a- artificial gravity so guests can walk around as normal. Um, this would make staying well, that's, as- that's a spinning thing would be the artificial gravity. Will. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it would make staying there long term more feasible and short stays much more comfortable. The hotel has been designed in a hundred and ninety meter diameter wheel shape, and uh, oh, and, okay. and I thought it would have been bigger than that. Yeah, well, two hundred meters. That's quite a distance and um the plan is for this wheel to rotate yeah so it has the same gravitational forces you think get it on the moon but yeah so uh it looks pretty cool it looks very you, cool you think you'd be able to book it on uh, booking.com or what if maybe yeah travago maybe? travago yeah, yeah. yeah just yeah. have a quick look for cheap uh space station <laughs> is it <laughs> yes and you know it wouldn't be uh no vacancy it'd be no space <laughs> nice one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, but yeah, look, it reminded me, you know, because I'm a you know Doctor Who fan. It reminded me there's an episode called The Wheel in Space, and uh, <laughs> I could imagine that I think 
that was a lost episode, so I haven't really seen it. But uh, I, I guess that the wheel in space it was pretty similar to this. I think um, that's where they got their inspiration, hey? They probably did. Yeah, the Earth escape pod. You're right, Justin. That's right. When the when the sun's going to explode, yeah, that'd be good. But just, wouldn't that be like great if that thing was self sufficient and you could just pop it pop out of the Earth's orbit and then just keep going and going and going? That'd be cool. One day. Well, you see, you're suggesting project, uh, propel that uh, into yeah, space. Yeah, just let it go outside the Earth's orbit, and then just let it go like a, like the one of those satellites that have already gone out there. You, know, you might run out of uh, something, though. Yeah. Oh, so, oh yeah. Self sufficient. Got to be self sufficient. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. But yeah, be a little while off, but that'd be cool. I wonder how much that'd be. Oh, you'd be oh, half tempted to give that a shot. Bucks. I probably wouldn't go on the first hundred. Goes. No. Because you think, well, if something's going to happen, <laughs> give it a hundred goes. You think you can afford it, hey? Yeah, it's probably pretty expensive, eh? They haven't made it yet, have they? Uh, I don't think so. Let me go. Uh, for, it's going to have 400 guests. Uh, I read somewhere that it doesn't, I can't find it here, but I did read somewhere that it's going to be hopefully ready for 2025. That's to make something that size. Look, it took, because it took. Uh, a lot longer than ten years to make to what we're talking. That's six years to make the uh, international space station. Why do they think they can make this any faster? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they've they've done it before. They know what they're doing. <laughs> I'm just looking to see if we can get a date for you, uh, but I can't find a date. The, oh yeah, the Gateway Foundation, who's building it, hopes to have its space station hotel up and running by 2025. Hmm. I believe it will happen one day, but uh, there's a lot of things uh, against uh, opposing because uh, fossil fuels to get there is a big problem. Yeah, yeah, it it's, takes a lot of energy. So, so many fossil fuels are used to, um, and, and we're running out of fossil fuel. Well, we've probably got enough to run run for the next have a, many years, but um, yeah, one I reckon day we won't have enough to get up there. By the time we run out, we've probably figured out how to mine other planets or something. I think yeah, you know, we got yeah. a bit for a while. I think. But, uh, yeah, but don't need to waste it, though. Now, I do have a story, by the way. Oh, okay, you can have a, have a go. Yeah, yeah, okay. I haven't got many, but I've got one here. Um, I haven't read the content of it, so it could be awful. It's, right. um, face, just let me uh, bring up the detail. Uh, sorry, you're just going to have to listen to me. Facebook could, Facebook could be a, uh, could be about to start hiding like reaction counts. Uh, Facebook could soon start hiding likes on posts to help in, improve users' mental health. The oh. company also tested a similar move on Instagram as a way to help break uh, users' fixation with getting likes on their pictures. The social, I'll just read a couple more sentences. Uh, the social media giant told Forbes it had been considering a test that would hide like reaction counts. No tests have been run. I haven't even tried it yet. Uh, the news comes as Facebook reveals its face recognition technology will now be available to all users with an option to opt out. Well, right. That's interesting that they're uh, opting uh, likes, giving people the option to opt out of uh, face recognition too. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, with the likes, that's that's a good idea because. People just, um, I reckon it's it's a contributor to mental health in the world. Uh, this, this, how many likes have you got? And uh, same with Instagram. And um, yeah, I, don't I think th- it's curbed some bad habits. I don't. I'd have to. Well, I'd have to disagree uh, to a certain point. <laughs> I'd say, I, I would say, uh, okay, yes, in this day and age, because of the way that some of these people have been brought up, maybe that. Yes, that they place so much emphasis on likes and dislikes and, you know, just really uh, superficial stuff. But, like, but uh, shouldn't we be tougher than that? Shouldn't, it, shouldn't the brain and the body just be tougher than, oh, dear, I didn't get any likes on that. No one likes me, boo-hoo. Well, if, if it was tough enough, you uh, wouldn't use it, I suppose. Um, the, the, the problem is pe- pe- there's plenty of people out there, uh, the amount of likes and tags and stuff they get on Instagram, Facebook is a measure of their uh, likability. Mm. And that's how, that's how they see themselves as being being measured. And 
I believe that is affecting mental health. That this shouldn't be the case, but um, would there be any good reason why they should count likes? Oh, well, yeah, saying how good you are. <laughs> That's exactly the point. <laughs> so, but like you, you to measure yourself against others to see if you're if you're uh, of any worth to anyone. But wouldn't you be more worried about how many friends you've got? Like, because likes are whatever. Like, likes are probably only going to come from your friends. Or, or nah, friends, you... friends are thing. Uh, from my understanding, friends are more a thing of the past, and uh, your likes, uh, amongst other things, likes and tags seem to be more important. Well, I know the Instagram because of... people. Yeah, people have friends, and they're not necessarily friends. They're just someone that's they've added because mm. they they've heard of them. Yeah, I'm, I, not... I'm not looking for experience here either. Yeah, I've seen, you know, you look up some people and their friends, they've got like 3,000 friends. You know, no way. But, like, I don't know. I think it's just all so, um, it's just all so nothing. <laughs> like, well, let's say, here's an example. I put a sexy picture of myself up there and I get one like and I've got, <laughs> I could have 3,000 friends. Yeah. If I get one like, that's a clear indicator that, uh I'm pretty ugly. Why are you putting pictures up, though? This is another problem that is that has led to you wanting to put a picture up. Because to, I want people to like me. To get acceptance so that you've, there's another issue. It's not how yes. many likes you get. There's another issue going on. Oh, yeah, and there's a lot of underlying issues behind this. And I believe people of the future that, that uh, the education system will implement a um, – will – hopefully take social media and people moving forward uh, that are, are brought up in social media and they, this, if education system uh, um, deals with it, I believe that people in the future will, will be able to handle this stuff. It's just us, people like uh, up until a certain point in recent years that people have brought up with indust- in, in the industrial age education system which um, doesn't really – cater for things like uh, Facebook and social media. But I like, you know, I get it with the kids, you know, they, they go, oh, um, you know, she, Izzy just called me this or Izzy just done this and blah, blah, blah. And then I just say, you know, having a fight about this is so, so, just so, such nonsense. And is this on social media or just face no, to just, face? No, just in real life. <laughs> and, okay. and I just turn to the little fella, the young bloke and I just say, she, like, I said, she, your sister, must be a very, very powerful person to be able to invade your brain like this all the time and make you switch off from what you're doing, having a good day, now you're having a bad day. She must be very powerful, you know, and he goes away, thinks about it, and hopefully at the end of the time he'll, he'll realise that it doesn't matter what people say and do, it's not physically, physically going to hurt you. Um, just trying to bring him up a bit tougher, you know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but, oh. well, well, there's obviously something something wrong somewhere because the stats indicate that uh, there's a problem out there. Yes, yeah. I, I, I probably agree that there's probably a problem. That's why they're trying to do it. But Instagram did it with the likes or the loves or whatever, didn't they? They, they yeah. hit them from public. I think you can like see I've got, I've got, Remember, I've got two kids that are, that are uh, in late teens, early 20s, and those um, those likes – <coughs> on Instagram were rather important to them, and right. it's reduced the um, the amount that they uh, want or use Instagram as a result. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right, yeah. Maybe Did that's you, what... You know what streaks are? Streaks? Yeah, on Instagram. Well, no, only I'd have to say like a streak as in so many in a row or something. Yeah, yeah, That's and that's exactly it. On Instagram, streaks are also... Um, uh, another similar, they're not good for mental health, where basically people have constant contact every day for a number of so, so many th- times. And, and I've, I've known people that have constant contact every day for, for people that they don't actually ever see face-to-face or really see face-to-face. Mm. Um, and it, contact can simply be a click of a button just to see what someone's doing. Yeah. But nonetheless, it's still a streak and they can go for years. Mm. Yeah, my son. He had um, he had a streak that he was gone for like three years, and he went. Oh. Uh, I think he went on our holiday last week, a week before, and he missed a day which broke that streak. Wow! Uh, and 
So what's he looking another, up? Another area which will affect mental health. So he's just checking in on another profile or something every day. Yeah, yeah just uh, oh. just checking in. Uh, so yeah, I, I could say to him, okay, uh, what is Billy Bloggs doing doing today? And they'd say, oh yeah, he bought a new car. He, he bought a new car, so he um, he uh, split up with his girlfriend. Or right. he, it's 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 only one small piece of information, but yeah. it's it's, uh, Makes it's you keep all coming back. It, it gives you a, a, a status level. Yeah, right. It's all about all about so these things we're talking about here are giving you a status amongst others uh, to measure your worth. But then Facebook gives you out badges as well. You know, if you like a page or you're a good integrator into a page, they'll give you a badge. Maybe well, it still is like it still comes from your like button. You got the badge. Oh, well, you you well, it's all, they're all similar things. Yeah, but maybe they should be stopping badges because the badges would sound seems worse. But anyway. Yeah, they're not stopping the likes. They're just stopping, st- stopping the numbering of it. Mm. Anyway, that was my little. That's my little two bob worth on that one. I won't read through the whole article. Uh, maybe in the show notes after we've finished, uh, we can add that in there. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, well, while we're talking about uh, streaming, uh, <laughs> well, we've got eight. Hey, we? oh, okay, <laughs> eight men facing charges over illegal streaming sites. So surprisingly, they uh, uploaded stuff to servers in the US, like. <laughs> I don't know why they do that. But anyway, uh, they they claim to have offered more content than Netflix. So oh, these- I, had a, I think um, I, I got a feeling um, Will and Jace may have covered this last week. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just quickly uh, – quickly, Yeah, go through it. Quickly. Now I've started. Oh, sorry, to, sorry to put the wet blanket on you. No, nah, that's all right. And I haven't listened to the whole episode. Uh, so um, – from last week, sorry, boys, but uh, but anyway, just in summary, the the, the place was called Jetflix, <laughs> and I yeah, yeah. and I stream it all. Uh, claimed to have more than three hundred thousand TV episodes. They charge uh, nine ninety nine US a month. Uh, currently offers monthly plans. Uh, it's alleged that the coding the services use coding to illegally obtain video from torrent sites like Pirate Bay, and yeah, they had them all stored in the US. Naughty people. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. You think they'd use a um, Chinese? Oh, I don't know. Same with the US. The last place you want to use. I don't know. Let's let's go. Let's see if we can get Jetflix. Is it is the site still up? Let's see if it exists. Yeah, you're going to jail, mate. Hang on, Jetflix. Jetflix. It's probably shut down. Oh, there. Yeah, free down. Oh, it's a. Oh, no, it's oh, it looks of... a bit shonk. Yeah, it's not the right one. No. Riding on the coattails. Anyone made any comments on Facebook? Sorry. Is there any comments on Facebook? Not about not about Jetflix. Okay. No. <laughs> There's a bit of was go, oh, you guys still on? Yeah. <laughs> now, um, uh, yeah. uh, look, but I've that'd got... That would be dangerous territory if you ask me. <laughs> so, look, we'll probably one more this week and, uh, yeah, we're going great for time. So, one more it will be, and Paul might have something to say about this, Google launches Android 10. Uh, it's officially begun rolling out formerly known as Android Q, and Android 10, the first version of the operating system to not include a code name based on a dessert or sweet. Since Google took over, additional new features in Android 10 include accessibility functions like live caption, sound amplifier, a new smart relay, reply system, improved control over when and how applications can use your data, and blah, blah, blah. What, what can you tell us about that? Got any news on that? Uh, yeah, they... they Change they they're ditching the uh, dessert side of it. I can't remember why. Um, Ran out. Maybe they thought it was time. Um, Get fat. No, <laughs> I, I had a. I did have an article to uh, uh, move on from there, but I've lost it. That's all right. Um, well, look, I'll, I can go on. Full details uh, of all the changes in Android 10 can be found on the official site. Uh, those on compatible Google Pixel handsets will begin receiving the over-the-air updates in the coming days. Uh, so those too impatient to wait for over-the-air updates can download and install the upgrade manually from the Google's developer's site. Uh, Android 10 updates are available for a whole range of Pixel 3a XL, 3a, 3xl, 3, 2xl, 2xl. I reckon they, boop, they will boop, come boop, 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 boop. to um, Android One devices pretty quick too. Yeah, so maybe, you know, maybe I'll fire up the Xiaomi 
and uh, you, <laughs> see what changes. You won't, you won't do that. Oh, yeah, well, I've got one. So, look, I thought about uh, getting rid of my Shami, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to uh, keep, keep it. Keep it in the cupboard. Yeah, I'm gonna, it. and I'm going to keep him charged because every now and then someone rings up and says, I can't hook up my emails, and I've got an Android phone. So now if I've got an Android, I can just, you know, I can punch through with them while they're on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I'll just, um, as you know, I did have an article, something to bring up about that. I may as well, if I can't find the article about it, I'm not going to read it. I'll just talk on uh, what I read. Yeah. It's, it, I don't need to authentic, have authenticating story, to, do I? No. <laughs> There's no <laughs> rules here. Oh, by the way, I've had my Xiaomi um, 3A, you can't see it. Oh, yeah. It's a bit bright. Um, yep. That's, a, that's an A3. You can see down the corner here. Yeah. See, you see a little, uh, a bit of a mark there. Right. Broken already. Oh, is it the glass? Yeah, I smashed the screen. Oh, have you got a protector on it? No, I did. I thought I was smart enough not to need one. Oh, that old trick. Well, obviously, I'm not. No. The old trick. I think you're smart enough. Yeah. Well, obviously, <laughs> I'm not. And the th- the problem is, it's a rare. It's a rare brand. It's a rare um, model. And it's an AMOLED screen, so it's going to be hard and expensive to try and get a replacement too. Can't, what about if you got some of that stuff for windscreens? It's supposed to <laughs> <laughs> fill it in. Yeah, I've got some super glue as well. Maybe that'll work. Well, what you might have to do, just put a dab on it to stop it from splintering further. Would no, it's, it's stuffed. It's it, Luckily, it's only, I think it's, you know how you with your phones, you've got different layers. You've got like a digitizer layer and then you've got LCD. Even though they're, they're uh, Velcro, they're stuck together. Yeah. Uh, under the very top layer is broken and the LCD is still fine. And everything's working fine. So I'm just hoping it'll just continue to work for the next 10 years the way it is. I don't know if you can see my phone. Yeah, I'll show you up there. But I, I put a, uh, you see that crack in it? Yeah, that's in the screen protector. Yes, I was yeah. happy with that. <laughs> My last one, would you believe I had a, had a, a Xiaomi uh, Mi A1, which is what you had. I had a screen protector on that, and I didn't break its screen, so I thought, oh, I won't break a screen on the new one. No, of course you won't. Of course you won't. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, I wanted, yeah, so what I was yep. going on to say, um, with the <laughs> next Android update, yeah. I've, I have the understanding that they're going to uh, remove Trusted face recognition, which I believe is a face unlock feature. Right. Yes, it sounds right. Um, yep. And I could just give. I didn't. I can't. I'm not talking for fact here. I'm just uh, from my understanding. Uh, until they improve the front cameras on phones that have depth perception, depth perception, so you can't just put a picture, picture. of a, mm. someone up in front of it. Until they implement that, I don't think that facial recognition should really work you know how the the uh, back cameras on phones have those laser d- d- measures and mm. uh, fancy fancy triple cameras Do does stuff. yeah until i can implement that on the front i can't see why facial recognition would work all that well yeah okay yeah or why why we'd say it's secure yeah you're probably right you're probably right like uh i don't think it's too much to ask to use your thumb to open it yeah oh, yeah and that's not too much. Something, no, nothing's uh, absolutely foolproof um, and someone said to me in a day, one of the problems with the face unlock thing, someone can be asleep, yeah. you can grab their phone, take a photo of them, and you got into their phone. Yeah. Um, or if they're standing in front of you, you can, take, you can hold it in front of them and you've got it. Even mm. like, as long as their eyes are open, they probably notice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't have a problem with that. I'm what, on board. Someone, you, you, so someone what? No, I don't have a problem. I'm on board. Get rid of it. Oh, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, the good old pattern or the numbers, they seem to keep on coming back to that. I, I believe they can improve this uh, face unlock thing, but um, th- there's inherent issues which they've got to overcome. Mm. Who knows? Um, yeah. Retina scanners. I think, what, what's the thing in the back of you, the very back of your eyes? Is that a retina? Yeah, retina, that'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they should just build uh, dual retina scanners into them or DNA DNA testers. But like you know, like if so, if you're going to get into someone's phone because they're asleep, like why why would you just put their thumb on the phone while they're asleep or wait till yeah, they're passed out? Yeah, that's why thumb is not. Uh, you got to touch them to do that. But your, your thumb is also not a a hundred percent secure. A retina scanner is because if you're asleep, you've probably got your eyes closed. Yeah. Yeah. Or a DNA sample. No, not even DNA sample. DNA is a fairly complex process, I think. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how they do it, but yeah, they'll figure it out. They're smart cookies. Now, I thought yeah. uh, we've been doing the what's happened this week in tech history, so I'll run through a couple of these. And, oh, yeah, uh, that's a new episode. Yeah, a new segment. You like that segment? I don't mind it. Yeah, because it, it gives it gives the opportunity to um, think uh, back, reminisce. Yeah. Well, how about you reminisce on this one? It's September 4, 1998. Can you have a guess? Uh, Windows uh, 98. Something to do with Larry Page and Sergey Brin filing corporation papers for Google in California. Filing on a Friday, the date of official incorporation would be marked as Monday, September the 7th. Starting out as a privately held company, Google would hold their IPO about six years later on August 19, 2004. Gee, okay. The, no, I didn't know that. The first commercial hard drive, September 4, 1956. Look at the size. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were around. You, were, you stepped out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the hard drive, that picture there? Yeah. The, <laughs> it looks gigantic. The IBM 350 storage unit model one was announced, uh, 1956, which was the first commercial storage unit to use magnetic disk storage. The technology behind hard disk drives, about the size of two refrigerators, <laughs> and uh, weighing in at one tonne, the 350 <laughs> could store about four to five megabytes. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so there you I go. Bet, I wonder if it was stored on platters or if it was on a metal drum. I think it did say discs, didn't it? Yeah, discs, ma- magnetic disk so storage. It did have platters. Yeah. The, uh, the 350 would be an integral part of the IBM Ramek 305, which would be introduced nine days later on September the 13th. The Ramek 305 and 350 disk storage unit were designed to replace the punch card tub file system. That was the primary means of storing repeatedly accessed data. Look at it. Is yeah, that the yeah. platters inside it? Do you reckon? Like, you, you can zoom in, you see if you can zoom in or something. Um, see, surely they're not visible, are they? I don't know. Control and rotate your wheel. That looks like... It looks like the platters. Gee, okay. Hang on. Oh, now we're gone. Well, screw you, that's this scroll then. Hang on. I can't handle it. Oh, it's no bigger. <laughs> they do look like the platters that are visible. They are, yeah. Glass, With a, looks like it's a glass cylinder, doesn't it? Yeah, it's something out of Doctor Who, the Master's TARDIS or something. <laughs> Who knows what it is. And I'll just, I just stuck my hand in the hard drive. And we'll do one more. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll do a couple of quick ones. eBay was founded. Yeah, I like this. September 3rd, 1995. First engine, first engine, first search engine, September 2, 1993, uh, was, was known it? as w- – sorry? What was the search engine? Uh, known as W3 Catalog or the CI, CUI WWW Catalog. It was started mm-hmm. by Oscar somebody at the centre somewhere <laughs> because it's in a different language. <laughs> <laughs> I could not find that one for. <laughs> first fly by a Saturn, September first, nineteen seventy seven. My voice is going. All right, that's enough. And um yeah, cool. oh, Aldous Adobe. You know, go back to that. The Adobe one? Yeah. See Aldous Adobe merger. Yeah. I, I remember that was nine two thousand four. I remember I bought Aldous there was a product called Aldous Page Maker. See the logo in the bottom right, the um Oh uh, yeah. I had Aldous Page Maker. Yes, um, I remember that now. Aldous. Yes. Yeah, Aldous Page Maker was the desktop publisher to have in the nineteen nineties. I, I got it in about nineteen ninety seven or eight, yeah. something like that. It was called, and I was comparing. There was a product called. Oh, it was a really popular desktop. It was, a, it was an opposing desktop publisher. Uh, Corel draw. Uh, it was made by Corel. Not Word Perfect. No, no, no. The Word Perfect is a word processor, not a desktop yeah. publisher. Oh, yeah. Page Maker. There was there was a couple of them, wasn't there? There was two. There was Aldous Page Maker, and there was a competitor, which was Corel Print Shop or something. Something like that. No, Print Shop was a graphics editor, um, but they were two fairly competitive products. And back in those days, you had to decide well which one we're going to go with. We went with Aldous, and since then we've continued. To, we, we that was when I was in retail years ago. We use Aldus for in that retail business for years and years and years, and we upgraded and upgraded. And then in 2004, as you saw there, it uh, went to Adobe, and then we got Adobe Page Maker, and we kept on upgrading. And it had such a long life. Like we we started on Adobe Page Maker about 2000, and pretty much shortly after Windows 95 was released, about it must have been about 1996. 
we got it, and it can, and we continue to use it right up until about two thousand and five. Yeah, okay. There's not a lot of software you can boast, other than uh, Microsoft uh, products. Mm. There's not a lot of software you can boast to continue running for so long. And now mm. they've gone to um, CS5, which is called InDesign. Yes. And InDesign can still open PC uh, PageMaker files. Yeah, really? Yeah, so InDesign Jeez. is – the problem with InDesign, it went more to a web-based um, – uh, production system as opposed to print based because they can see the right in a wall for print and um, we stopped using it then and I just went to good old words and seen yeah right well maybe if you're uh, if you got one of the old IBM 350 disk storage unit model ones in the shed you might be able to get a few page maker files off it boot them up <laughs> that's 1950 something you're, you're, you're about 30 or 40 years out there well you still got you still got to have one humming away in the in the shed you put your oh okay you know, as long as they weren't any more than four to five megabytes, you use up the whole you use up the whole wall of your storage. <laughs> Jeez, but uh, yeah, so that's um, yeah, and something else that I just thought I'd just throw in uh, just before we leave is the could talk about Adobe and all that sort of stuff. And um, Justin reminded me in the in the Facebook chat, Flash was Adobe's downfall. Yep, I think it was it Steve Jobs Absolutely. that said uh, a little while ago, well, obviously a long time ago now. Uh, that he said that no longer will we be supporting Flash. So uh, Jobs took Flash off the mobile devices and now Flash is saying ta in Chrome as well. So uh, this little story here, uh, when was this published? July 26, so it's a couple of years ago. But, uh, yeah, Adobe announced plans to stop supporting Flash at the end of 2020. Well, there you go. That's another long life of a product. Uh, 20 years in mm. anything in, in, in this game is... is Bloody big achievement! It it had a miserable, it had a miserable um, ending mm. because it just there was just bad news there towards the end. If you wanted viruses and stuff, you, you yeah, that's right. Flash, and that's 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 what it what that's was its downfall. But you'd be surprised how many people still got Flash on their website. Hey Tim, so <laughs> you want to take it off because? Gee, is that a customer of yours? No, it's someone I know. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes he watches in the chat. So, <laughs> but um, but look, get rid of that flash. Yeah, but not only is it just old, and you know, uh, I'm not sure what Google Chrome's going to do to it at the end of next year. Whether it just might just come up, you know, with the broken or the jigsaw puzzle or something, yeah. and just say can't do it. But not only is it you know flash and with all its inherited problems, but uh, Google doesn't like it that much. That if you've got flash on your page, it it'll it sinks that ever slightly your SEO ranking. Oh, so, really? Okay, I didn't yes. know that. So if you if you got Flash on your side and you want to try and climb the Google rank, uh, get rid of it because they're marking you down for it. Yeah. yeah. What about uh, just on that matter, um, Java? Is Java facing the same problem and websites and stuff or has it got a prosperous life? I think it's uh, still kicking along pretty well. Yeah, I, it's not an obsolete thing. I don't know a lot about it. No, nah, not as far as I know. I think it's uh, used quite a bit uh, I'm not a Java programmer or nothing I don't know yeah. either but um, I just fiddle around in WordPress and I know um, every, everything's Java everything's got JavaScripts loading okay, in and out so of it it's still well used because mm. I, I was told that there's JavaScript and Java they're, they're very different things yeah I think Java I think they're two different languages yeah, I'll, I'll yeah and they're the same name it's a bit surprising they call them the same Yes, and yes, yes, because then you've got your Java on the computer, but JavaScript yeah. on the web. You remember back in the old days, you used to have to, you know, you'd get your, your OS and you'd set it up, and then you have to install Java. Like, I haven't done that for years because they built it into uh, either browsers now for when browsing the web. Mm. Yes, well, new programmers, and here we go. New programmers yeah. and non tech people alike have confused Java and JavaScript. But their yeah. only commonality is the word Java. Each is a pro- <laughs> each is a programming language in its own regard, and each has its strength over the other. One isn't necessarily better than the other. Programmers use both, and Java and JavaScript for a variety of different tasks. So JavaScript is in the early days of the internet, around 1990, uh, i.e. Netscape Navigator were the most two popular browsers that were using it. Uh, and then the Java is a programming language invented by James Gosling and developed by Sun Microsystems. It took a bit longer than 10 days to develop. Uh, I think that JavaScript was about 10 days. 
It took yeah, closer okay. to four years. So yeah, the primary difference. Oh, we're not going to go into that. But if no. you just hey, search I just up, wonder, how can they keep the same? How can they have the same name when they're hardly associated at all? Yeah, I don't know. I've got no idea. Well, now you just I just got to keep yeah. your Java up to date on your computer. I know that. So if you've got it, well, I don't. What do don't you mean? You? Yeah, right. I, I don't have Java installed. It's you know, some programs require it. You got to just got to keep it up to date. Okay, Java, well, not the ones I use. Yeah, right. So you, if you go to your Windows start screen and yeah. just type in Java, nothing comes up in the search. Oh, yeah, it does. I think it might be – actually, I think Microsoft – no, I don't – programming language Java. Okay, well – But it doesn't come up as an installed app. No, I don't think it does. Software platform or programming language. Mm, okay. I think it's just a web search. That's all it does. Yeah, right. Um, I got a feeling Windows, Windows. <laughs> excuse me, sorry. Bless you. Windows and um, Google, I think, have uh, embraced Java, Java itself, reasonably well. I think. No, I'm, I'm really no expert in this field. I should just shut up. Java code, <laughs> Java code must be compiled, and Java co- JavaScript is all text. Each language uh, requires different plugins. JavaScript code is run on browser only, while Java creates applications that run in a virtual machine or browser. Java oh, okay. is an object oriented programming language, and JavaScript is specifically an object oriented programming scripting language. So there okay. you go. He's getting into the into the nuts and bolts there, eh? Yeah, uh, yeah. Getting a bit muddy for me. <laughs> bit much for me too. I'll stick to me what I know. Yeah, I'll Good stick, old Windows. I'll stick to me WordPress GUI. <laughs> yeah. hey, one, right. one more thing, just wanted to talk about. Yeah, I know. We hopefully haven't gone over time. Um, Always. Windows. Have you heard? There's been a lot of talk about Microsoft and Windows. I listened to a uh, podcast. Uh, uh, had Leo Laporte in it actually, uh, of all people. Um, and he was talking. He was talking about the fact that. Microsoft, Windows is not a big focus and a big money spin or anything for them anymore. And um, they're, they're really focusing in other areas. But mm. I've got to say, Windows is is the best, in my opinion, that it's probably ever been, um, the way it's operating. And yet it's not a good money spinner. Um, so I'm sort of thinking, has Microsoft got a future for Windows? Well, I think the future, well, yeah, look, I'm not speaking from any position of knowledge, but I think, like, I think from what I understand is that, yeah, they're just going to keep pushing out updates to Windows 10. I think Windows 10 is where it's going to stop. And then it's just going to just be updated, you know, with the the additions every twice a year or whatever it is. It's going to keep improving, yeah. And uh, I think because, you know, you've got got your Linux, you've got your Chromebooks, like, um, the world's just going mobile, you know, like. So yeah. there's some there's a lot of people that don't have a desktop computer anymore. Like if you weren't doing, uh, say, video recording or doing what we're doing here now, uh, if you're just the average Joe, you probably your iPhone or your iPad might be enough to get you by. Yeah, right? true. So, uh, but that's not that's not the reason Microsoft moved out of or did, is is not focusing and developing uh, that, that that so much. Um, it's more a case of. Uh, they, they've they've seen the cloud because they, they they put they're putting a lot of effort into well, Azure. They're, ma- they're yeah. making a lot of money out of it. They are they're, they're raking it in, yeah, and that's they're... what they're there for to make money too. It's the same oh, as yeah. um, Amazon's doing fantastic out of there. Is the same mm. thing. So I guess like you could probably say that you know that the they're making all this money out of the cloud, which is great. But okay, people got to access the cloud, so we better make a little operating system for it to do that. So maybe you know integrates yeah. well. I yeah. just wanted to see what other people, because the, the way Leo Laporte, the way Leo spoke, it was as, a, as if to say, oh, Microsoft, I'm not sure if it's got much of a future. Well, I'd have to say Microsoft, Windows, uh, sorry, not Microsoft, Windows might not have much of a future. Well, I've got to say that it's Windows is the easiest to work on now than it has ever been. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I don't know what one. I'd like, be interested to know what their time frame was. Not much of a future. What's that time frame? Twenty years? Yeah, and what, what's right. and what's their plan to? But oh, yeah. you just got to in our industry. You just got to uh, change when change yeah. changes need and be prepared to continue changing and change fast. That's right. And Justin in the Facebook he says Windows 10s version making money from the App Store. Good question. <laughs> he 
that's that's, uh, that's app a that's a funny one. That's still pretty crap. That app store. <laughs> I was in the app store the other day because I I got my little Sonos speaker over here behind me that I listen to Spotify through, and I thought <laughs> oh, I wanted to I wanted I listened to something on the web page. I thought wouldn't it be good if I could send the computer sound to the Sonos speaker? And so I googled around and came across a couple of uh, items in the Windows Store, Windows App Store. One was five ninety five. One was I don't know seven ninety five. But just the look and feel of that joint just makes me go, "This looks rubbish." I'm not even going to pretend to even. I don't even want to risk. I don't even want to try this. I just what I just put up with listening to it on my computer speakers. Like <laughs> I just don't like going into that Windows Store at all. Like it, I've been in there plenty of times. I do get the occasional thing from it, but I don't like it. No, like Zoom, uh, not Zoom. There's a few things. In fact, I don't actually know what I get from the store. You know, you know, Notepad is being shifted out of the operating system and into uh, the store. Right. Why? <laughs> because I want people to use the store. I don't know. Maybe I. I know Leo once again spoke a bit about that. It was a little surprising because that that is a program that has stayed the same for so long, and at times, if you want a plain text editor. You just jump in there and you uh, yeah, I know. use, use uh, good old Notepad and it, because you know what to expect. You always have. I'll tell you a better one than Notepad. I use Notepad++. Plus Plus. Yeah, this, it's not a Microsoft product though. No, that doesn't worry me. That but, worries me. <laughs> but look. It, <laughs> is, He's in the store. I'm in the store. Look, isn't it just rubbish? It's rubbish. And if I go Sonos, if we look at these apps I was looking at. And uh, nothing's got any reviews. There's just nothing going on in here. Five ninety five, and look at it. Just you're gonna pay for it. They want to give you something. It's dangerous. just nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. Even the people also like even the uh, the the icons or the avatars or the artwork for these things is rubbish. Yeah, and it's just. I remember I had um, no, just, an app a long time ago which I was really uh, dark on. I, I listened to. Uh, EDM, that's electronic dance music, and the website I list my music on is called di.fm, and I used to be able to uh, listen to it uh, through an. Uh, there was a, a, a app they made it of their own years ago, um, where you could you could run it, and then this was back in the Windows XP seven days. Hmm. Then Windows ten comes out, the Windows Store comes along, and then they make a di.fm. Uh, store uh, an app on a store. Well, that was the biggest piece of rubbish, that piece of software. <laughs> and I, I basically used it for a while and they ended up just canning it because yeah. it didn't work properly. And I ended up just going to the website and listening to it there because it was so, so crap. Yeah, I know. It's rubbish. But anyway, they've got to fix it up. But obviously, that's not where their focus is. And developers aren't no. focusing there either. So, yeah, it's just going to die a little unnatural little death, I think, that, that yeah. joint. But uh, yeah, but all right. Well, let's get out of here. We've um, yeah. done a good one tonight. This week, right. you got to yep. go for uh, other. You got to go and do a delivery. Yeah, got to go for a drive. Good stuff. All right. Well, thanks for coming in, Paul. It's been good no to worries. talk to you again. Uh, and sure. um, where, where, where can people reach you at? I uh, they can just search for Entire Computer Services on Google, and you'll find me there. All right, and uh, wealth of knowledge he is, old Paul. He g- comes out and fixes your computers and l- hooks you up to the internet and does the internet research for you and all. You do it all. You're very good, very good. Whatever you need, I'll do it. That's right. <laughs> all right. Bring beers with you. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, on the Facebook. And uh, we'll see you soon, eh? All right, good stuff. Hope the Sharks win on Sunday. Big day, big oh. day. All right, see you guys. Bye. Bye-bye.